Hi everyone, good day. Welcome to today's uh, video. So for this video, I am going to show you an overview of what Power BI can do and how easy actually it is to create visuals in Power BI. So this uh, video can serve as an introduction to Power BI. As we go on with other videos, I will show you how to create more complex data models in Power BI. But for now, we're just going to show you a very simple uh, visualization in Power BI. So the first thing that you have to do whenever you uh, prepare your or start your Power BI is you have to make sure that you got the correct uh, settings. So you go to File, and then you go to Options and uh, Settings, and then go to Options. And once you are in the Options and Settings uh, window, one thing you want to check is the regional settings that your Power BI current file will load to. So for example, if your file is formatted in such a way that the month is uh, identified first, so MDY, for example, whenever you're dealing with dates, you may want to make sure that it matches the correct locale of your file. So for example, in my case, I'll use English United States because the file that I'm going to use follows this format. So if you upload a file that follows the date, month, year format, for example, and uh, your locale in um, Power BI is in the United States, then it may cause some problems that later on. Now, another setting that you want to check is the data load of the file. So there, Power BI can actually connect several files together and build what we call a data model. We will discuss that in another video, but as a primer, one thing that you want to make sure whenever you're doing Power BI is you want to uh, uncheck this, the auto-detect new relationships after data is loaded. So this setting, if checked, allows Power BI to connect your tables right away on its own by analyzing the data and finding out what is similar between your tables and use that similarity to build relationships. Though most of the time, Power BI can be correct whenever it connects uh, tables, it still is better when you are in control of the relationships of your file. And you also want to be the one who created them so that whenever you need to go back and fix some problems in the relationships, you know that what kind of relationship you did in the data model and you don't have to analyze what Power BI did and that would take longer. So uncheck that and click OK. So after that, you're now ready to load in your uh, data in Power BI. So the first one that I'm going to show you is a very simple uh, report. So I already have here okay, an Excel file that will act as the data source. So I have some numbers here like the transaction ID, the date booked, the package, the customer name, payment method, salesperson amount, and tax. So let's say that this will be my data source. So you just have to make sure to know where the file is saved because you will need to connect to this file uh, in Power BI. So I will close this file now that I've showed you what it uh, looked like. So I'm now going to the Home tab of Power BI. And you see that under the Home tab, you can drop down the get data option and see some possible data sources that you have uh, for Power BI. So it could be an Excel workbook, another Power BI data set, or the Dataverse, or the SQL server, a text, a notepad, or a CSV file. It could even be an online file. And there actually are more um, options available for you. You can click more. And you will see all the possible uh, data sources that you have okay, for Power BI. So you have lots and lots of possible data sources. Honestly, I haven't even tried all of them. I mean, who would? But it could be almost anything, of course, except a few. But we have here different uh, 
data sources. Okay, so some of them may be familiar to you, some may not. So anyhow, what we are going to use is just a file, at least for this uh, first video about the Power BI series. So I will choose Excel workbook and then click connect. And this will uh, bring us to a pop-up, okay, that we're in. You need to now find the file that you're going to navigate. So I have here my data source file in my documents. I'll click open. And it will start connecting to the file. So take note that when you connect to the file, then you must have access to that file, meaning it's not something that um, you can just remove later on or delete later on. That data source, that file, is actually still the data source uh, later on when you open the file again. So you cannot rename or delete that file. If ever you have to do that, then you may need to fix the connection again later on. So uh, as much as possible, make sure it's just there and not renamed or not moved. So here I'm being asked what sheet I am going to uh, connect. So I only have one worksheet in that file. So when I check that one, I will get a preview of my file. So you just have to make sure that it's showing the right file. And then you have an option here that says either load or transform. Now for this video, we are going to go directly to Power BI interface and click load. But just to give you an idea, the transform data or edit in some versions would lead us to the Power Query interface. And that is something that uh, I will show you in another video. But for now, I don't need Power Query because my data is already nicely um, entered. It's already neat. I don't have to edit anything or remove or process the data. I just need the data as it is. So I will just click load now. And Power BI will start uh, bringing in the file okay, to the interface. And if you, in case you're wondering, does it mean that the Power BI file will be heavy okay, or a larger file size? Well, the answer is yes. Since Power BI technically sort of like loads the data somehow, so you will get very heavy Power BI data files if you have um, a lot of files being connected to your uh, visual or your report. And by the way, while it's still loading, just to let you know, we usually call visual, okay, the charts as we call it in Excel. So I'll be using the term visual to refer to what we may know simply as charts. So now I have a, a window here that says 89 rows of data uh, has been loaded. And I will check okay, if it's properly loaded. So in the Power BI interface, you will notice that there are actually three views available for you. So you have the report view wherein you will place the charts later on. You have the data view which is technically a preview of the file that is currently loaded in Power BI. And we have the model view. So the model view sort of like shows us what the data model is. I will show this to you uh, in detail in another video because right now, since I only have one file, there is no sense uh, using the model view. If I have another file later on in maybe an advanced video, you can actually connect files. Okay, using the model view. Okay, and that's actually what we call a data model. But we'll do that in another video. So, uh, if possible, hit the subscribe and notify button so that you get to know if I have already done uploading that video. But for now, I have the data with me and I am now going to create a report. Okay, so I'm going to go to report view and I'm going to bring in a visual. So compared to MS Excel, we have far more um, lots of our options in Power BI. So we have uh, different kinds of charts. We have um, column, bar, line, pie, donut, and other kinds of uh, visuals. 
you could even get more visuals if you want and this will bring us to the microsoft uh, marketplace wherein you can download your um chart okay from some um, developer we'll not go through that we'll just use the charts that we have here or visuals that we have here in power bi so i'll bring in for example a clustered bar chart so i'll just click that and i now have in my first page okay my first visual so i'm going to lay it out a bit and then i'm going to bring in the fields okay for my visual so i simply have to drop this down if it's not dropped down this will show us a list of all the fields available in uh, the worksheet that we just uh, connected to and just like pivot table you simply have to drag fields okay towards their respective positions in the visual so for example for the package name i will uh, place it on the y-axis of my chart and our uh, visual and you will notice that power bi will start to load okay i have to bring in my numbers so let's say that for the numbers i'm going to use the amount field and i'm going to drag that into the x axis of my uh, bar chart and now i have my first uh, visual in power bi and you notice that it already has the packages like tour packages on the y-axis and the numbers on the x-axis so just in case you already forgot your basic math so of course this is your x-axis and over here is your y-axis so one thing that you have to realize is that power bi doesn't use the um column or row concept it, it uses x and y in most of its uh, visuals and now we have our first uh chart or visual in our report page i could add more pages if i want in my report just like adding new worksheets in excel but i'll not do that i'll just stick with the first page and at this point you may wonder what makes a power bi report different from an excel uh, dashboard or excel chart well the difference actually lies in how you can interact with the visual so uh i will add another one so let's say i'm going to bring in a donut chart so i'm going to click on the report page and then click a uh, the donut chart and then i'm going to bring in another set of uh, fields so i will use let's say for this one payment method and place it on the legend field of the donut chart so i now have the four types of payment but there's no donut chart yet because i don't have numbers yet so i'm going to bring in the amount field in the values uh, data field this will eventually create the uh, pie chart so now i have my second chart in my report page so here is where the difference lies between excel and power bi aside from excel only being able to you know process a very few data power bi uh, you can connect to lots of uh, reports but one key difference is that the charts are actually clickable so for example i want to click on the 100 islands tour and that would update the other chart okay so the other chart is sort of like being filtered to show only the data that is related to this uh, 100 islands tour that i just clicked if i click this then it shows me some more interaction or changes in the donut chart and it's the same if i click okay from this donut chart it'll also update the um, bar chart you could actually change how this uh, interaction goes on so right now it's using the highlight view okay or highlight mode wherein if i click on one of the data points then it updates the other chart but only by highlighting okay that uh, portion for example i click this cache so this highlighted areas here are the cache 
portion of the bar chart if i click this one so it's now giving me the gcash portion it's a payment method for example of my bar chart and that is why you would like to use power bi because i could publish this report and the, this interaction between charts actually can get retained even when you already publish the report something that excel if you are familiar cannot do at the moment and that's it so this uh, ends our first uh, video regarding uh, power bi i have a lot of uh, videos in store for you for power bi and vba if you notice recently i published a video about vba so i'll be creating videos for these two simultaneously uh, if i if i find time but for now i hope you learned something on how easy Power BI files okay, can be created. And I'll see you in the next video.